Hey guys, just want to make a quick video on uh, a Genesis Atomizer, the Did Clone, also known as the Vulcan or the Griffin here in the States if you buy it from a vendor here. Uh, it's a, it runs about eight or nine bucks if you get it from China. Over here, I've seen it anywhere from nine dollars to just under twenty bucks. So it's a wide range, but if uh, the best deal I feel is from China. So I'm going to just talk about a few of the modifications I made to this to make it a really good atomizer, a really solid performing uh, atomizer, regardless of the cost, it just works well. But it didn't work right out of the box, and I understand like the bad rap that it has gotten in the forums because of its difficulty in use and uh, just uh, not the consi no, no real consistent vape quality because... Uh, top coil would get too hot and you know a lot of dry hits and not enough wicking and this and that so I, I did a couple of modifications to alleviate all that and to make it performing really well so let me just show you what I got on it I'm running on stacked AW 1350s 18350s and you can see you know it's just working pretty well so right off the bat I put the PVC tubing on this and I find this is a lot better than the the steel tank or the clear plastic tank because it does not crack it's as wide as the Vamo so I feel like it gives it a not a cleaner sexier look but it gives it a cooler look in my opinion um, because it's not a difference in the width as from the battery to the atomizer so I kinda like that um, though the top cap is still much more narrow but um, that's the one modification I did, and there's no leaking at all. There's no leaking at all because it's a soft PVC tubing that you can put a big O-ring on, and I just literally slid it from the bottom to the top. I slid it over the 510 connection and up like that, so it's wide enough to, to go through the knurled uh, top and uh, base cap. It just slides right on top, and the, the O-rings capture it, and there's absolutely no leaking, not a single instance of leaking. And... Um, the second modification I did was to enlarge this wick hole to uh, 7 64ths of an inch and I used just a power drill to enlarge the wick hole that was already there. I would like to get a bigger wick hole in there but you could see how close it is to the threading already. Any bigger of a wick hole would have damaged the threading and would render it useless. So this was the best that I could do with, uh, with the drill bit that I had with the space that I had rather so I mean you can see it's just chugging and chugging and chugging I mean that the cutoff is there but you know it just keeps going on and on and on and on and I got 1.2 ohms on this and uh, that's with 28 gauge canthal and I know, know and I've read that you can only get uh, you should only use rather 28 gauge canthal if you have a mechanical mod and use it on your Genesis atomizer if you have a mechanical mod you know you do the two three wraps get the sub ohm coil but I feel like I'm getting the best of both worlds. I'm using the 28 gauge canthal, so I'm getting the thicker wire, more coverage over the wick, and I have to use six wraps to get it to 1.2 ohms. Like that's the limitation of the Vamo. It can't do anything below 1.2 ohms. So I did six wraps, and it comes out to exactly 1.2 ohms. I have it on my other, on my, my other one too, and it's the same same setup. And uh, you know, it works perfectly. It works absolutely perfectly. It is a good amount of vapor. It's a good amount of vapor, and you could chain vapor. I'm not a chain vapor, but I do have those moments where I do want to take uh, draw after draw after draw, and no dry hits at all. very pleased with it and it's all because of that enlarged wick hole and the vapor production it's a little bit increased because I bored it out to a 1 16th inch air hole which I feel is imperative on all these kinds of atomizers and so there you go those are the three modifications I did to it to have this working perfectly in my opinion as best that it could and you know I talked about it in my other video I wrapped the 510 connection with this plumber's tape 
Um, and that's just so that, you know, it gives it a snug fit. It, it's not pretty to look at without it, but when it's on, you don't see it at all, and, you know, you don't hear anything. As you're screwing it on, it doesn't feel like creaking and metal on metal, nothing like that. You know, it just slides on like butter. You go, it's firing, and, you know, it works fine. It doesn't eliminate the conductivity at all because it's not covering the center pin. So the, those are the four modifications. The plumber's tape on the 510 connection, the PVC pipe, uh, mo uh, modification instead of the clear tanks, the enlarged air hole, the enlarged wick hole, and I guess the fifth, it's not really a modification, but to actually use 28 gauge Canthal, but you have to be able to wrap six six spots on it, and there, it's a pretty long wick, so, I mean, you can see the coils aren't extremely, you know, aren't wrapped so close together that it's, it's you know, you need like a a magnifying glass to do it. I mean, they're spaced out like a good amount. So, and you can see that vapor just comes off. The vapor just comes off. So, there you go. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll just take one last uh, one last drag on this and call it a day. Enjoy. Thanks for watching.